I am sore today, but man, I also have a big, huge smile on my face because I had an amazing day yesterday. I was going to say, I hope you're not expecting us to go, oh, you poor dude, that must have been rough. Those pictures looked amazing. Yeah, I I got the big invite from one of my good friends to join him on the trail snowmobiling all day. We covered about 60 miles, and my heart is full. Welcome back to another episode of the Entrepreneurial Family Man Podcast. I am here with my good friends, Chris McCluskey and Michael McGreevy. Jamie Slingerland, we miss you. We know that you have spent the last week filling up your own cup with your family, uh, enjoying Cancun and your time with your wife and kids and beach and fish tacos and so much beauty around you. So uh, you are missed here, my friend. But we are just four guys who are crazy about our wives. We love our kids and we want to kill it in business. And this entrepreneurial family man podcast is all about those important topics that are close to our hearts. And as Michael, you referenced earlier, we want to address today this idea of filling your own cup, doing things, being the person that you are that gets rejuvenated, that that comes alive. Again, so many times when we're living this entrepreneurial family man journey, we, uh, our calendar can get caught up in and the work and the family time and just living life, doing this life that we so love, but yet sometimes we can put on back burner those activities, those interests that might uh, put that extra pep in your step, pop in your hop, whatever you want to call that. <laughs> but, pop in your but, hop. I like pop that. Pop in one. your hop. I like that. Those are that Chris Niemeyer barn signs, right? There you go. That's a, that's a step or two down from a mic. A mic a mine are very simpleton and uh, they only, only require a couple letters. So, you know, not, not very deep. <laughs> but let's talk about this because what you shared earlier, Mike, is, is an important example here of filling your own cup uh, in order to stay on top of your own game and, and serve your wife, your kids, your clients. And so, Let's lay the foundation first before we get into this. Why is this so important in our lives? I know for me personally, if, if I'm drained, if I haven't done anything that makes me come alive or really taps into what I love and what I long for in life, then I'm, I turn into kind of a miserable person after a while if I don't pay any attention to that. And that flows into how I parent my kids, probably a little bit have a... Sh- more, I, I probably have a shorter fuse than usual. Um, I'm not as good of a husband when that happens too. Really, I think what it is, is I, I get burned out after a while. And something that my soul longs for is adventure, especially in the outdoors. And I can tell when I haven't been outside and on an adventure in a long time, because I just have that kind of miserable is a strong word. It's just kind of like something's missing. Like I need something to make my heart come alive and open up a little bit more. Yeah. You know, thinking about our, our functioning and my background in psychotherapy, one of the little acronyms that we use with clients who would be prone to having a relapse back into their addictions, not just kind of being a little edgy or a little grumpy, but actually falling off the wagon was a simple acronym, HALT, hungry, angry, lonely, tired. Those little quick checks on self. How am I doing? How full is my tank right now? Well, if I'm hungry or I'm angry or I'm lonely or I'm tired, I'm, I'm saying my tank's kind of empty. I'm running on fumes. I'm depleted. We're a whole lot more likely to do stupid stuff. Pop off at one of the kids, be short with, with our, our wife, uh, make a bad choice business-wise, just kind of ignore the kids, shuffle them off. Hey, I got work to do here. Uh, and certainly you can take it all the way to, you know, falling off the wagon if you were in addictions recovery or whatever. But I think, you know, attending to our own cup, filling our own cup is about listening to self enough to go just like the tank in our car. Am I on fumes or do I need to stop and get a fill up? We wouldn't think about not driving the car with a fairly full tank, but we can drive our lives with a frequently very, very close to empty tank. And it's not going to be pretty. At some point. That's a good analogy, Chris, on the tank, because I think that we can identify with that our own tanks and and tanks in our own marriage too, and being attentive to 
our wife and, uh, and her, her concerns and her adventure as well. So let's talk about that for a minute because this is important that we don't want this to become sounding selfish. Like, well, my cup's most important here. Really, if we're investing in our wife and what makes her come alive, what makes her uh, adventure spark, right? We're going to probably have the opportunity where she reciprocates and says, you know, honey, I thank you for that couple hours at the spa or, or get my nails done with the girls or, you know, having some tea time or whatever that is. There's a likelihood that she will then say, boy, you know, you, you need to get out. You, before you halt, like you said, Chris, like mm-hmm. you, you need to go and fill up your own cup as well. So Michael, talk about that where I know you and Lydia do a lot of this for each other. What does that look like in your own marriage that gives you the opportunity to have this full day adventure? I have a lot to learn in this area, figuring it out. I'm stumbling through this myself. But what I'm learning is that if, if I do what I want done for me, if I do that for Lydia first, then it makes this, this idea of fill my own cup a, go a whole lot more smoothly. If, you're not, if you don't have a culture like that in your marriage where you're trying to almost outdo each other to, to support each other, this is going to be really tough to pull off. It, it's almost going to be nearly impossible. Um, so, so we try to do that. I, I try to think about Lydia and, and think, man, uh, what really makes her feel refreshed and renewed? What's get, what gives her a break and gives her a chance to be herself and feel, feel like an individual instead of somebody who just gives all day long every day to the kids? And so I try to do that. I, I try to think, well, what can I do to take the kids for a while so she can get out and fill her cup a little bit? And then when it comes up, when I want to do something like that, it's not like I'm trying to barter something or to trade something so I, I can validate my position of wanting to fill my cup. She's helping me out the door and packing my bag for me. And, and that, that dynamic is a result of us working on that together for each other. If, if we don't do that, it, it can be really awkward and difficult to try to pull this off. Yeah, that's a good point. I like what you just said there, working together for each other, right? That, that's, that's pretty important. That's, I, don't want, I want to underscore that. Working together for each other gives you that opportunity, that lens to look at where can you invest in her? Where can you, as you said, what makes her rejuvenate, uh, refreshed? And she'll likely very much do the same for you. So let's, let's get to this first point here then in terms of filling your own cup up is number one, recognize the value of it. Recognizing that we need these opportunities, uh, both for our wife and for ourselves to, to fill, fill that cup up in a way that's going to bring the best version of ourselves to our marriage, to our kids, to our, our business. Chris, how, how do you do that? What would you say to a man who maybe doesn't recognize that? Well, it's, it's a concept, happily, that I was raised with very strongly in the family that I grew up in. And I think I've referenced this probably a year, year and a half ago or so here on the podcast. There was a little piece of poetry that my mother would frequently quote to we kids. It was by a poet named John Greenleaf Whittier, but I'll toss it out here because it's not even important to memorize it. We actually put took just a little snippet of it, but we would rehearse it a lot in the family out loud as to the value of filling your soul, of doing the things that will keep your cup full. So here's the little little poetic piece first. Oh, and and there's a word in it that's not in our normal vernacular. It's dole, D-O-L-E. It just means a payment, an amount, money. If thou of fortune be bereft, and in thy store there be but left, two loaves, sell one, and with the dole, buy hyacinths to feed thy soul. So it's using like, like literally loaves of bread, you know, you got to have that to live. And it's saying, yeah, if, if, you, you know, if, the, if you're really bad off and that's all you got, even in that case, be sure that you don't just feed the body, feed your soul, hyacinths or flowers. So, you know, do, do something that will feed your soul. So mom raised we kids with that, you know, well, hey, be sure that you're feeding your soul, you know, sell your, your one loaf and with that money, make it a priority to get whatever your version of a hyacinth is, 
uh, in, in her case, she loved flowers and the fragrance and all of Hyacinth, but it's just a beautiful thing. So that's why we named my horse Hyacinth when we got here to the farm. That's when we talked about it here on the podcast. But I think that's the message that I would give to men is just to recognize that, yeah, realistically, okay, if we only had two loaves of bread, we're not going to buy flowers or anything else crazy. But how often do we instead keep amassing things, growing the business, getting more money in the bank, doing the next big deal, because we just never reach a point of saying, is that enough? No, there's never enough. It's instead, that's enough for now. And I'm short over here somewhere else that matters every bit as much in the soul filling department, in the experience department, in the relationship department. I need to be sure and have a more balanced approach to what it means to be secure or to provide for my family. So I think the big challenge to us men is to be constantly gauging what do you really mean by being, quote, provider? It's much bigger than just succeeding on the, on the business front. Yeah, that, that's so true. And I love that example of the, the hyacinth. And it just recognizes the value of things that lift your spirits and fill you up and how important that is. And I think a lot of guys struggle with that valuing their own self-care really is part of that because you look at the landscape of life you look at kids and you look at your marriage you look at your job and bills and activities and everything else that's going on it's, it's very easy to let that idea of filling your own cup just get pushed aside and pushed to the back of the list when really, when you push that to the back of the list, what do you have to give to all these other important areas of life? And that, that was difficult for me too, because in some ways, right off the bat, it, it felt selfish to say that I'm going to go take care of myself. Well, what about everything else that's way more important than that right now? And, and I think sometimes I've worn that as a badge of honor almost. I think other guys have done that too, where yeah, I don't take care of myself. I take care of my family first and everything that is important and then I'll get the rest type of thing. Well, maybe your family is getting the rest because you're not taking care of yourself right off the start. Having a shift in mindset, I think is important of seeing the value of investing in yourself and how that trickles down to everything you touch in life. You know, and joining what you two just said there, that idea of provider and sometimes it can be a misnomer where it's only the the business function the working function but essentially what you guys are both saying is to be the best provider you need to be your best self your best version of yourself and if you leave those things that fill you up on the back burner they become stale you're not the best provider you're not the best version of yourself to bring into your marriage to your kids to your your business so Let's help guys move to point number two here in terms of identifying. Like, how do you identify? Maybe it, maybe it has been months or years where you really have not filled your own cup, done the things of, let's say, leisure or adventure or activity that you want to do. How would you challenge someone to identify those activities that they might want to reinvest in? Well, I'll play off of that word from, from what I was just sharing about the, the highest and feeding our soul, the word soul. I think a lot of times we don't think a lot about what our soul is. It's not our spirit. Our spirit is a different part of us. That's the animating part of us that, that makes an electrocardiogram or something, you know, blip on the screen. It is the energy force that is us that leaves when this body finally dies and the, the physical body goes back to, to dust why the spirit continues on the energy force, but in between that physical body and the animating spirit is this soulish part of self so that we're body, soul, and spirit. And the soul is where our emotions reside. It's where, because of our emotions and our intellect, where our personality rests. And any of us can say, I know on certain days, I am so me. And on other days, I am not me. I'm like, man, who was that guy? Like the Snickers commercial, right? Like, <laughs> like, what's wrong there? Well, what's wrong is your soul is letting you know it's starving. You are not attending to your emotional state and or your intellectual state. Sometimes your emotions might be okay, but you need to, quote, clear your head. Or you need to feed your intellect with whatever the things are that your mind loves to, to ponder. Mind, will, and emotions 
those thoughts, those emotional states, and our will, the exercise of our will that says, now I'm going to do the right thing. And it's easier to do the right thing when I'm in a pretty decent emotional space and when my mind is pretty intact. That's the part of self that we're asking, what is it that makes you come alive? What feeds your emotions? What stimulates your mind in good ways? What when you're engaged in it, is your snicker bar. What, what makes you best you instead of some freakish monster type thing that, that is not, it's still you, but your soul is saying, yeah, but you're, you're not all together here. What are the things that your soul loves? Mm, I like that. I'm going to speak to my fe fellow cavemen out there and not use any important language at all. <laughs> I always learn something, McCluskey. Every time you speak and you break things down, it's really interesting. For me, I'm, I'm just going to simplify this the way that I think. There's the have-tos, and then there's the get-tos. <laughs> and so this is, for me, it's removing all the have-tos from life, all the checklists and the things you want to get done and the things you have to do. And well, what if you had nothing that you had to do and you got to do? whatever you wanted to what would that be what would you do if you didn't have to do anything but you got to that's a good way to put it that's a really good way to put it too i i would even simplify it to a word is is what i'm hearing from both of you is play like what would you do if you were to just play like getting back to that that little boy inside you right the the maybe it's the high school or college you know student inside you that's like to your points, if I had nothing on my plate as an agenda or a calendar directing me, but could just choose those activities of interest to myself, what would I choose to play? You know, for a lot of guys, maybe it is an actual playing of a sport or engaging in some kind of an activity of sport or hopping on a, a, a sled for 90 mile an hour runs through the snow like Michael did <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, hiking, hiking through the hills that you have out there, Chris, and, and hopping on four wheelers like we did when we were out at your farm. I, I know for me, you know, part, of, part of why we moved to Florida, frankly, was I go back to what I, what I enjoy playing, like when I'm on vacation. Man, if, if I had a free day and had a warm beach and sand and sun and a, a paddleboard and a kayak and some beach volleyball and maybe a good book to read, like that would fill my day and I would just enjoy it all, right? So that's just a good question to have. Like what would be the the get to's what would be the play that you could engage in yeah and everybody's so different i mean that's another tendency too is what should i want to do well maybe for you it's going to a library and getting lost in some unique subject that you're fascinated on maybe you want to spend the whole day reading um don't i mean don't all feel right bad that's enough different. <laughs> he's ripping on me chris <laughs> <laughs> chris, chris is over there saying i resemble that i mean i resent that comment <laughs> wait is that you mccluskey for real <laughs> is that how you is that how you would recharge chris I, no, I seriously no, don't, no no in fact I you know what so. i was thinking of a small but, way i recharged this last weekend uh, it was a crazy weekend because we were away out of town with my son at an event that he was involved in a Pokemon tournament. It was a three-day tournament. Not my kind of thing, except I'm thrilled that if he's thrilled, I'm enjoying it for his sake. But, uh, but I had come in, in a real bad physical state. I had to go see my neuromuscular massage therapist at 8.30 at night just to get put back into rights. So I didn't even start heading off this thing until 10 p.m., got in there going on one o'clock in the morning. So I'm, I'm tired. I'm still physically sore. I've got a lot that I quote need to be doing business wise. And I'm here for him at a Pokemon tournament. I'm not going to pull out my laptop and not really be there. I'm going to teleport into my business. No, nope, I'm here at the Pokemon tournament with my son. But when we were coming back, we're like, well, we've got to eat. So even a small thing that would feed the soul would be something like, well, we could go to McDonald's or Five Guys Burgers and Fries, or we could jump on Google and find out where there's some place that might have fish and chips, which I love. And so we actually found a little place, went just maybe five extra minutes out of our way off the highway to find this little place that had fish and chips. They had Guinness on draft. Aww. And I sat down and I said, okay, you know where I am right now? I'm at Burton on the Water over at England out in the Cotswolds. I just, you know, that, that fed my soul. The food that connects to a happy past place, even while you're in the middle of whatever else it is that you might be doing, you know, driving on the highway and being exhausted. We can fill our tanks 
pretty quickly. I love that. I mean, in taking that, taking that fuel in that tank as the analogy, sometimes you just need those little top offs, right? You, you just need sure. those little times where this, this was maybe simple, but boy, it really did at that moment, fill your soul. And just a great reminder, you, you can imagine yourself there at the English pub, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that helps bring a, a bigger smile to your soul. So, so I think we've helped guys even identify, uh, how, or how they can identify these activities. And now thirdly, and lastly, schedule it. How can you schedule this? You know, Michael, what did that look like as you were pouring into Lydia uh, and giving her these opportunities? What was it look like to tell her, but I, I got this opportunity here. How, how did that go for, for you? Oh, it was awful. I felt so guilty. <laughs> I don't know why I felt <laughs> like I, I'll be, I'll be real. I, I felt bad. Like, Oh man, Oh man, I'm going to leave her with three kids all day on a Sunday, which is typically a day that we spend together and we go to church and we eat together and we hang out and ah, I'm, I'm going to bring this up and I'm happy to dismiss this because I don't feel like I should have the right to do this. And so I brought it up because I got the invite from one of my friends. It was kind of a last minute sort of thing. So not, not necessarily scheduled out in advance, but when I brought it up, I was a little bit shocked on how she responded. She, she said, you need this. Like, I think you should go. I was kind of like, what? What? Really? <laughs> Talk to my good ear. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Let me yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then as I began to think about it and we talked about it a little bit, I realized that uh, it had been a while since I paid attention to this part of me and I was feeling maybe a little bit burned out. And so having that affirmation from, from her helped me just commit to it right then and there. And um, I think that's... It, Fortunately, it didn't require planning, but oftentimes it does. Like sometimes you have to look out into your next couple of months and say, well, where can I fit in a little bit of stretch of time where I can, where I can get away and, and feed my soul a little bit. You know, it's good. And it resonates with me because both Alicia and I, we've, we've been going pretty strong with all this house stuff and back and forth. And we literally just, uh, last week when she got home from this trip to, uh, with the kids to Virginia and had a fun time and I was, you know, working my tail off. I'm like, boy, once we get moved in here, we both need to just take uh, whatever it is, a few hours, a half day uh, of just doing this thing that we might choose to do that we love. And uh, so I think we're going to take that kind of advice of just let's get this scheduled. Like we know when we're going to move now, let's put something on the calendar and make it happen because it's so important. And, in, and to your point, in a busy life, sometimes there will be last minute opportunities, but more likely than not, looking at your next few weeks or months and trying to find a time to fit in something uh, that's a little more important, a little more maybe uh, time consuming is good for your, uh, good for your over, overall family dynamic, right? Absolutely. There's times when it needs to be planned out, calendared out, uh, make arrangements, get the babysitters, uh, re reserve the airplane tickets or whatever. Uh, but there's a lot of other things like we're saying here today that really are just a matter of ongoing dialogue with our wives that emphasizes that, that what's good for us is also good for them. We're making sure that they feed their souls as well. And that really cuts, I think, to the core of the primary thing is that we make it a value. I'm not sure that for a lot of men, it's a very high value. And as I was sharing at the beginning, I'm thankful I grew up in a family where it was a value. I didn't choose that. That's just the family I grew up in. But I'm so thankful that it was a value to be sure engage frequently how empty is my soul right now? What might fill my soul? And, and have big and little answers to that frequently asked question. Yeah. And do you think, you think God cares about this for us? I think he does in a big way. I think he created that need and that desire in us. And so it's not such a selfish thing sometimes. Like he wants you to experience this thing. And I, I remember before I, on my way out driving to the shop where we we're going to meet and, and take the snowmobile trip, I just felt the need to really connect with God and ask him to help that day go well. Because it's sensitive. Sometimes a bunch of things can go wrong and I can feel like it wasn't really a fulfilling or filling up type of, type of experience. 
So I just felt compelled to talk to God about it and ask him for his help and just say, God, what do you have for me on this day? My soul is a little bit starved right now. Can you meet me here? Can you fill me up and, and can you protect us from injury? Can you help us with our relationships and our conversations along the day? Can you help our machines not break? All the, I just started praying about it and inviting him into that experience because I think he wants that for us. He wants us to come alive and really experience who he is. And he put these desires in our heart. So I would highly recommend praying and asking God to join you and partner with you as you try to fill your cup. Yeah, that's a good word, Michael. I'm just thinking of really God the Father. He delights in his children, just like we delight in our own. You know, I'm thinking of uh, the parable that Jesus told, right, of what earthly father would give his son a stone when he asked for bread or when asked for a gift would give him a serpent. Like, no, the father wants to bless us, wants to uh, fill our cups up, which is what we're talking about here. So that's, that's great. So what about you? You know, when it comes to this idea of filling up your own cup, like we discussed, sometimes it might sound initially a little selfish, but take a look at your own marriage. Are you doing this? Is this important in your relationship? Are you giving your wife the opportunity to, to refresh and recharge? Hopefully you are. If not, make sure that that's your first priority. And, uh, and then take a look at, like we discussed here, recognizing the value of filling up your own, your own cup of recharging, of coming alive again of being on adventure. Number two, identify what are those things that if you had a full day to yourself to just play, to just get to, what would you put on that schedule? What are those activities that you know would bring a smile to your face as Michael's had here today? And then thirdly, take the time to schedule it. Sit down and talk with your wife, make a plan. Maybe it's days, weeks, months into the future that you each have something on the calendar to, to look forward to that's going to recharge the soul like Chris talked about here. So identify those activities, make it a priority, schedule it, go do it and enjoy because your father delights in you.